How is everybody doing this afternoon? That was not good. One more time. How is everybody doing this afternoon? Welcome to Philly, the home of Comcast, which represents this side of the audience. <laughs> no, thank you all for everyone that sponsored this event. It was not possible without you. But most importantly, thank you all for coming and spending time with us in Philadelphia. We've got a lot to cover today. I'm going to tell a little story. And then we're going to bring up a few people on stage to talk to us a little about culture, empathy, show us a really cool demo on some things that are happening in the Cloud Foundry ecosystem. And then we're going to wrap up with an amazing panel with Comcast. But first, this is a caterpillar. And you're, you're all thinking, why is Abby showing me a caterpillar? Like, that's insane. But wait, there's more. For me, a caterpillar is emblematic of a conversation we're all having a lot every single day, but also we're going to talk a lot about at this event over the next few days, transformation. You see, a caterpillar weaves a cocoon, disappears for a few weeks, and emerges as a butterfly, transformed. It's magic, right? Let's talk about something completely different, a whitewater kayaker. Whitewater kayaker, she's navigating the rapids, always alert, always in motion. For a whitewater kayaker, waters are constantly moving around her. She must react to their forces in the moment, one moment at a time. That's not magic, it's mastery. So let's talk about each of your organizations today. What does your existing technology ecosystem look like? Do you feel like you're able to respond to customer needs that are changing every day or market needs that are changing every day? Do you feel like you're able to iterate and innovate as quickly as you possibly can? Are you a caterpillar or a kayaker? Because if you listen to the way we often talk about digital transformation, it's that we're all going to weave this cocoon and emerge transformed. We're going to be a new company. Just you wait. But we all know, particularly those of you in this room, that it's not that simple. Real transformation is not about adopting the next new and shiny thing. It's about adapting to a world that's now ordered around new and shiny. And that new and shiny thing is actually a river rapid of new and shiny. And that's not slowing down. So the reality is, is we're all kayakers now. From here on out, the waters are going to keep shifting around us or under us in ways we can't imagine or even predict. In fact, from our last research, we saw three quarters of IT decision makers agree that digital transformation means constant change, perpetual adaptation, not a one-time change. But what does this mean for all of you? It means that you need to put in place plans for learning. And not just learning, but continuous learning. You need to be able to have choice, the optionality as you evolve and change. And finally, you need to build in a lot of abstraction, because complexity is going to continue to evolve. And how do you make that easier for yourself over time? So whether you're a CIO, a COO, or a software developer, you've got to focus on the horizons farther ahead than just the next and shiny thing. In order to be successful, you need to develop a system that helps you take advantage of these things. Because new tools and technologies are going to continue to come up. And you're going to have to figure out how to take advantage of them in ways that make your business better. 
the reality is, is the pace of change is accelerating. In fact, everything is accelerating. I believe that in 2019, organizations are going to be forced to reckon with this new reality. There's a rivet rapid of change coming, and there's no getting out of this boat. So we're just going to have to learn how to master the rapids. We just finished our latest round of research, which you're going to hear a couple more mentions about it recent in, in this talk as well as throughout the rest of the two days. We saw that 69% of IT decision makers say that digital transformation is important, which is great. But we also saw that 21% are just now starting to see the benefits of that. So we need to change. Change is hard, and there's still a long way to go. But I predict that new the organizations are going to quickly adapt to this new world particularly those of you in this room, not that I'm biased, but if you're here, you're clearly interested. Um, and you're going to be the ones that win. You're going to be the ones that make this change. In other words, the world needs better kayakers, and your business needs better kayakers. But what does being a better kayaker mean? Before digital transformation became this word that is now capitalized and eye-rolled and sneered at, I felt like it had a, a better meaning. I felt like it was really succinct and could be summed up in three things. Being more responsive to customer needs. Failing faster. And finally, innovating more and iterating on those ideas quickly. To me, that's what digital transformation was. We have all spent the last eight years building a platform together. The platform that enables businesses to sell and offer Cloud Foundry to their customers, but also the users of Cloud Foundry that are now shaping the futures of their companies on it. So as I think about what we're going to do in the future and where we're all going to go together, I really focus on how do we adapt to change faster? How do we embrace multi-platform? And the most important thing, because we're at an open source conference, is how do we engage more in open source? Because none of this works without you all participating. One of the greatest benefits of an open source platform is that businesses that are using Cloud Foundry have choice. And that's something we thought a lot about when we built the foundation and we've grown and expanded the foundation, is how do we give choice and how do we bring clarity to what Cloud Foundry is offering? In a multi-vendor, multi-platform, multi-cloud environment, Cloud Foundry offers developers the opportunity to run their applications in any language or framework of their choice. And that continues to be our vision going forward. So when you hear us talking about our certified offerings, these are companies that have maintained their code for Cloud Foundry with the upstream and are continuing to update that and continuing to verify against that. So it's a high bar to be on this list. But for you that are users, this gives you the optionality. It gives you that flexibility. In fact, we announced last year cloud.gov is our newest distro and is the only one that is FedRAMP certified. Yes, shout out to the 18F team. So last year, I spent some time talking about interoperability. And, and I know a lot of you were like, ah, what does she mean? Why is she talking about all of these things? But for me, it's important. When I think about what a technology platform offers, particularly in this space that is cloud and cloud native today, that's changing not just every year, every quarter, I think about what that innovation needs to look like for us as well. So we have a long history of both innovating the new technologies, but also adopting emerging technologies. Because that's the value we want to bring to our users and our providers is making sure this platform continues to evolve, 
But that's also the benefit we have of having such a broad community that are passionate about cloud and cloud native. In fact, here are a few of the technologies we've adopted over the, well, since the beginning. We've got a lot more work underway, which we're gonna talk about some of those over the next couple of days. But projects like OCI, CNI, Kubernetes, Envoy, Istio, these are projects that as they've matured, we've been able to adopt them and pull them into the platform. In fact, today, we're proud to say that trillions of dollars of global market activity runs on Cloud Foundry. And thanks to the engagement of our community, our platform will continue to evolve. But why do we care? Why is that important? Because we've heard from our users, as well as global enterprise companies around the world, that open source is more than just unlocking opportunity for users. It's actually about unlocking opportunity, sorry, than protecting from vendor lock-in. So when I think about the power of open source, it's the opportunity to drive that innovation and allow all of your ideas to be part of what the future of Cloud Foundry represents. And we're continuing to integrate new and emerging cloud technologies every day. One of the things we also saw in our research, and you know, when you like to be proven right, it's a multi-platform world. So what we've seen is nearly half of enterprise users around the world are running all of these things. They're running platform as a service, they're running containers, they're running serverless. And so when we think about the future, we at the foundation in particular, think about it broad, more broadly than just a platform as a service. But what are the opportunities that exist for users beyond just a single runtime? And how do we continue to think about that? I don't want to give away Chip's keynote tomorrow, but he's going to talk a lot about where these emerging technologies are coming from and where we're going. Open source is fueled 100% by an engaged community. We are not successful without our community. You, our community, hold the future of Cloud Foundry in your hands. So my call to action for all of you is to participate. Thank you for coming to Summit, but also your participation is what strengthens our ecosystem, and in turn, that's what powers our community. I could stand up here today and tell you that we're one of the most successful open source initiatives in history. We've solved the hard problems of adapting over time and continue to focus on the needs of our community and our end users. In fact, we've had over a thousand people contribute to the project in the last year alone. Our pull requests tend continue to go up. We saw a 30% increase year over year. What does that mean? That means that you are all powering the future of Cloud Foundry through your contributions. Big and small, you're what make the difference. In fact, our community is a microcosm of the larger technology landscape. We've got large providers, GSIs, cloud providers, small ISVs, and users, and all of you make this a successful ecosystem. And you, our members, reflect that. Because we couldn't do this without you. So now I'm gonna to transition to a few of our users that I wanted to highlight today. And of course I have to start with Comcast because we're in Philly. If you're like, what is this behind me? That's Philly. It was an inside joke for the foundation. I was like, that's a really pretty skyline. What city is that? It's Philly. Comcast here. Do we have any people from Comcast here? One or two? Yes. They had the longest commute for any of you. It was two blocks, and it was really tough. It's cold out. It is cold out. Yes, it's cold out. And I'm just going to give a few stats because we're going to have Comcast up on stage to talk a bit more about their journey. But one of the things that really excites me about Comcast, 
longtime users of Cloud Foundry and super active in our community. Big shout out to Greg Otto. And if you're a user who needs someone to talk to, Greg Otto just got a new position today. He's now the head of the end users. <laughs> Sorry, Greg, it doesn't pay. <laughs> but Comcast, over the past few years, has made such huge leaps in their transformation journey. With over 3,000 developers working on Cloud Foundry today, they've seen over 75% productivity improvements. In fact, they have 1,500 active Slack users. I have a hard time saying active Slackers, even though I know that's how you say that, but it just seems a weird thing to say. But, and you're like, why is she putting Slack numbers up there? Because think about that in a, in a community that you're building in your company. Because a community exists with us collectively across a broad number of companies. But in an organization, you also have a community. And you have an opportunity to share and build on those ideas. And I think Comcast has done a great job of building that community internally. And they now have over 40,000 application instances running across nine different environments and are running 200 million transactions a day across the platform. So when I think about building the future and I think about running at scale, I think about what the work Comcast is doing. Another company that I really liked the story of was Talis. They're a large aerospace and defense contractor in Europe. And they've created their own version of a DevOps movement called the Digital Factory. They've grown their digital factory from just starting with 10 people to now over 200 in three countries. But one of the most important metrics for them was allowing developers to spend 80% of their time coding and driving that innovation back into the organization. And they were also at the same time allowing to improve their application availability to four nines. And the last user story is Sky. And for those of you that aren't familiar with Sky, I know the Europeans in the group will, will know this one, but it's a large media and telecom provider with over 23 million customers across Europe today. Sky has been actually a longtime user, many, many years of Cloud Foundry, and now use it to run all of their mobile services, powering all of their backend applications for their mobile services. In fact, they also did an amazing thing. They developed the Sky Academy, which is what they're investing in to reskill and upskill their workforce as they move to make DevOps part of their core culture. These are just a few of the companies that have decided they're going to be kayakers. And my ask of you today is that you become a kayaker too. But the theme of this conference, which you may have noticed, is build for the future. Contributors continue to build the cloud native future. Cloud Foundry users continue to build the future of your companies on top of Cloud Foundry and work alongside us as we navigate the future. But the way you build your future is to contribute your ideas because your ideas matter. So thank you all for making Cloud Foundry all that it is today, but more importantly, what it will be in the future. Anyone who learns to master the rush of the rapids will tell you it's kind of addicting. They can't wait to get back in. That's what we want for you and your organizations, to outmaneuver the competition to experience what you've never seen before, and to build for the future, but also have some fun while you're doing it. And now I'm gonna make a hard transition to some news. We have several announcements. The first one I'm gonna put up, speaking of interoperability and a lot of the work that's happening, this dropped in our press release this morning but the Arini project is a project we announced in Europe at Summit last year. And since then, the Arini team has gone full bore. And now it's passing the core functional test. And I don't want to take too much away from the Arini 
demo, because Jules is going to give a demo on stage here tomorrow. But this is one of the things I'm most excited about when I think about what the future of Cloud Foundry looks like. It's projects like Arini. These are the projects that are going to power us into the future. I also want to announce that we've got two new certified systems integrators. These are two companies that have invested in Cloud Foundry. They've made substantial contributions, Accenture and HCL, but they've also got certified developers. And the bar actually is quite steep to be a certified SI because you not only have to make contributions back to the community and participate, but you also have to have over 10 certified developers. And we're wanting to see those numbers grow as organizations are growing and scaling their Cloud Foundry teams. And I referenced a lot of data in this slide, and for those of you in the user day, a lot more. All of it is available as of today in our latest report that's out. You can get all of this data in our latest white paper. But it's going to talk a little bit about the move to cloud, but also the journey for digital transformation for enterprises globally. And the user survey is out. I know many of you in this audience are, enterprise, are, in, are end users, right? Yes? How many in this audience are users? I feel like some of you are not raising your hand. <laughs> like two people from Comcast raised their hand. <laughs> it's open. Please take the survey. This is how we find out more information about what you're doing with Cloud Foundry. And if you're not able to participate and you know, do pull requests and give feedback, this is also a great way so that we, as a collective community, know how Cloud Foundry is being used. Also, a quick shout out to several of our members. They have formed the Continuous Delivery Alliance. Woo! I bet that was Steve. <laughs> this is actually super exciting. We've had four of our members, Resilient Scale, Stark and Wayne, Super Orbitable, and TechFlow, get together to take their expertise that they have running and powering cloud native technologies and are partnering with the government to help the government overcome the DevOps and security challenges. So this is actually pretty fantastic. I'm actually really excited to see things like this come from our community. And so if you're actually interested in learning more, you can reach out to any of the companies who are all here and, and ask them how you can join and participate, or you can go to cdaalliance.org. We also have, all of these members also have news. This was in our press release but they're all here and they all have booths on the floor. So feel free to check out what else is happening in our community. So thank you all for participating. Now before, don't run away yet, because we have a lot more coming on stage and we have a lot of exciting things happening.